Hey, this is Anthony Thrive, so you can watch Decide and Ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new Simpson Mod Bandit Modular Helmet, available at RevZilla.com. Hold the phone, Simpson's first modular helmet. We know Simpson. Their throwback style is awesome. People love them. It's very distinct. It's kind of Bane meets Batman meets badass. And again, we've seen the Ghost Bandit really knock it out of the park. They said, listen, we're going to look at that shell. We're going to look at the functionality. And we're going to listen to our customer. And now they're doing a modular helmet. Coming in just under the $500 mark, which is really only an incremental step up from the Ghost Bandit, we now have a three pound, nine ounce modular carrying the same profile and same technology as a Ghost Bandit. Fiberglass, three pounds nine in my universe is pretty lightweight for a modular. Considering we see a lot of premium modulars, it still get close to four pounds. Again, there's very few modulars outside of what AGV is doing getting anywhere near that three pound mark. Looking at a lot of vents, a lot of functionality, you have a drop down sun visor, and they're using premium components. So right now, Fall of 18, this is the launch. I have a matte black. We should see graphics and additional colorways coming down the pipe later, but all in, it's a rock solid helmet, save for one gripe. Simpson made an amazing helmet and made it a pain in the ass in only one way, and that's the fact that it fits about a size large. So take your measurement, it's intermediate oval in its head shape, use the size chart, and again, intermediate oval is just like my head, a little bit longer front to back. It's the classic US motorcycle fit these days. 10 years ago, we saw big round and massive narrow helmets. Now, most helmets are intermediate. People understand that, that are building these lids but you have to go down at full size. So use the size chart. If it says you're a medium, you're a small. If it says you're a large, you're a medium. It fits a full size big. Now I'm not mad at Simpson. They're trying something new. It's a modular. It's gonna fit a little bit more loose because you have to have clearance for the modular actuation. But if you're watching this video and you're debating on a Simpson Mod Bandit, you need to take a second, do a quick measure, get a gauge on what your head size actually is, and then use that size chart. Remember, we're happy to walk you through it. Give us a shout. And as always, click our logo, subscribe to Revzilla on our YouTube channel, leave me your comments, your questions, your feedback. We're also going to ship for free. Now, diving into the lid itself, a few things going on here. You have a classic, aggressive Simpson shape, that flat front, and then it sweeps. Two chimney vents, you have actuatable chin vents, again, that vent to the face, vent to the shield. It is going to be pin lock ready, and it's using the same pin lock mechanism as the Ghost Bandit. I wish for around the $500 mark, or call it 480, that was included in the box, but you do have the posts, so they're all ready to, grow, ready to go. The other thing that jumps out, and if you're a diehard helmet geek like I am, and you look at this lid, you're gonna gasp, and you're gonna say, oh no, it's got the drop down sun visor, so I don't have to change my shield a lot, but it's got these, twist mechanisms that we've seen on other helmets that in the past have been a big gripe. Relax. What Simpson's done is they've taken this twist actuator that does twist and it does lock and they put a lock on it. I hate these when there's not a locking mechanism. If you're not careful, they can come off while you're using it. You can lose these over time. These lock into place via that little button. You don't have to worry about them. So again, that's a kick save on their point. And really, if you think about this lid, the only major gripe I have with it is the fact that I wish like, I'm not mad at them for making it $50 more than a Ghost Bandit. I actually think they did a great job adding all this technology, but they're typically not cheap helmets. So when you think about the competitive set, though, you can't get something that looks this aggressive with this level of functionality that actually weighs close to 3.5 pounds on the market today. So it's not a grape. It is what it is. $500 is a lot of money to invest in the helmet, but you ask yourself, what's your head worth? And you have to do that calculus. And for a lot of folks that invest at a higher level, they understand where they're spending that helmet for dollar ratio. Now, looking down at the front, we talked about the flat front. We're coming back up here to the shield. Notice a few detents. You have a nice seal. It's going to be decently weatherproof. You even have some intakes down here. If you crack this for the city position, it's going to flow some air in. Another thing, if we talk about the modular actuation, notice you do have metallic hardware here. Cheaper helmets use plastic, Simpson's using a metal locking mechanism. And I will tell you this too, other thing to call out, this is a fiberglass composite helmet, which is how they make it so light, but it's a polycarb chin bar. Typically, we always see polycarb in the chin bar. For whatever reason, manufacturers will construct using polycarb. It's easier to do for that shape, for that mechanism, outside of some of the few seven, $800 helmets that will actually use fiberglass or carbon fiber. But I wouldn't sweat it. That is typically something that's very normal that we see often. We talked about the actuation. It's done in the correct position on the back side of the shield, easy to find with your non-throttle hand, but down here it leaves space for a sticky mount or clamp mount comm unit system. Again, most riders these days that are spending lots of miles, they want navigation, they want entertainment, they want communication. And again, this is gonna be set up well for a modular comm unit. 
Now, if I work my way into the guts here as I flip it backwards, you're going to see on the back side of this swoop here, nice aerodynamic. We do have two passive chin vents. And I'm going to open it up from here, and we'll work our way through the guts. Double D-ring is standard. You have two pops of reflective with some rubberization. Again, that rubberization is nice, because then even if your seat's wet, it's not going to slide off if you put your helmet down. And then as far as removing our mechanism here, we have Cheek pads that come out, single piece, integrated with neck roll. It's a nice touch. And I love that they gave you a pop reflective, extra safety features here. Again, if you're wearing a modular, typically you're putting more miles down. You're going to see a multitude of inclement weather. And now you're better suited to make sure you're safe and you're seen. Again, nice, nice cheek contour there. Again, these days, we see lots of helmets. Anything north of 200 bucks is going to have premium guts in it. You need to be able to remove it. You need to be able to wash it, let it dry out. It's going to keep it less funky and allow you to enjoy yourself longer on a ride but also enjoy the helmet longer. Looking at the side here, notice they give you a nice big speaker cutout, and this is plastic to integrate with the modular system. But what they also did is they gave you, if I move this guy out of the way, you're gonna see a little channel, and that's for the wiring. Again, that's very forward thinking of them as they're designing this lid to make sure that those wires, when it's not EPS, so you can just push the wires into, now it's plastic on plastic, you need a little bit of a groove or a channel to hide that away. If I start to deconstruct the front of the helmet, they've done a lot right here as well. Notice. Multiple different levels of mesh, different types of comfort liner uh, features. You have foam around the crown of the head for comfort support. No, no integration points on the brow. You have it down here, just above the eyes, which is gonna be plastic to plastic, meaning there's no pressure point. And even along the back here, you'll never feel these two basic simple snaps that, th that work their way in towards the bottom of the lid. And ultimately at the front here, again, sonic welding, stitching, you have a helmet comfort liner that should hold up and allow great airflow. If we look at the interior guts, big vent holes and big channels. That is a nice touch allowing optimal airflow through the lid coming in even from the front, circulating back. If you're wearing a touring helmet, you're typically touring or you're commuting or you're sitting in traffic or you're seeing a helmet that you're gonna wanna be able to use the summer and the winter. And this helmet checks all of those boxes and you have the drop-down sun visor system so you don't have to carry an extra shield. On top of that, it's lightweight and it looks badass. You can tell I'm a fan of the Simpson Mod Bandit. Kudos for them to create an iteration of a style that was already working, not sacrificing quality and giving you that additional functionality without doing anything more than just about a 10% increase in cost. They've done well, they continue to do well, they continue to lead this charge in this retro inspired, inspired from the auto world, just kind of badass lid style helmet. Now. The next step in your journey is to click the info button, your desktop, your mobile device, visit the product detail page at RevZilla.com. Read other rider reviews. You shouldn't just take my word for it. And if you want to talk to a gear geek, see us at RevZilla.com or 877-792-9455. Thanks for watching our detail breakdown. Remember to subscribe to us at RevZilla on our YouTube channel. Stay up to date with our opinion, latest and greatest in the motor universe. I'm Anthony. We'll see you next time.